Welcome to Bite at a Time Books Behind the Story, where we answer the questions you have about your favorite classic authors. What inspired your favorite author to write their novels? What was going on in the world at the time? Follow along with us as we tell you what was happening in the world while your favorite authors wrote your favorite classics. My name is Bree Carlisle, and I love to read and wanted to share my passion with listeners like you. If you want to know what's coming next and vote on upcoming books, sign up for our newsletter at biteatatimebooks.com. Be sure to follow my show on your favorite podcast platform so you get all the new episodes. You can find most of our links in the show notes, but also our website, biteatatimebooks.com, includes all of the links for our show, including to our Patreon to support the show and YouTube, where we have special behind the narration of the episodes. We're part of the Bite at a Time Books Productions Network. If you'd also like to hear a book by the author, check out the Bite at a Time Books podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Today we'll be talking about the literary success of Louisa May Alcott. As an adult, Alcott was an abolitionist and a feminist. In 1860, Alcott began writing for the Atlantic Monthly. When the Civil War broke out, she served as a nurse in Union Hospital in the Georgetown area of Washington, D.C. for six weeks in 1862 to 1863. She intended to serve three months as a nurse, but she contracted typhoid fever and became deathly ill halfway through her service, although she eventually recovered. Her letters home, revised and published in the Boston anti-slavery paper Commonwealth, and collected as hospital sketches, 1863, republished with editions in 1869, brought her first critical recognition for her observations and humor. This was her first book and was inspired by her army experience. She wrote about the mismanagement of hospitals, the indifference and callousness of some of the surgeons she encountered, and her passion for seeing the war firsthand. Her main character, Tribulation Periwinkle, shows a passage from innocence to maturity— and is a serious and eloquent witness. Her novel Moods, 1864, based on her own experience, was also promising. After she served as a nurse, Alcott's father wrote her a heartfelt poem titled To Louisa May Alcott from Her Father. The poem describes how proud her father is of her for working as a nurse, helping injured soldiers, and bringing cheer and love into their home. He ends the poem by telling her she's in his heart for being a selfless, faithful daughter. This poem was featured in the books Louisa May Alcott, Her Life, Letters and Journals, 1889, and Louisa May Alcott, The Children's Friend, which talks about her childhood and close relationship with her father. Between 1863 and 1872, Alcott anonymously wrote at least 33 gothic thrillers for popular magazines and papers, such as The Flag of Our Union. They began to be rediscovered only in 1975, In the mid-1860s, she wrote passionate, fiery novels and sensational stories akin to those of English authors Wilkie Collins and Mary Elizabeth Braddon, under the nom de plume A.M. Bernard. Among these are Long Fatal Love Chase and Pauline's Passion and Punishment. Her protagonists for these books, like those of Collins and Braddon, who also included feminist characters in their writing, are strong, smart, and determined— She also produced stories for children, and she did not go back to writing for adults after her children's stories became popular. Other books she wrote are the novelette A Modern Metaphistopholis, 1877, which was published anonymously and then believed to be the work of Julian Hawthorne, and the semi-autobiographical novel Work, 1873. Catherine Ross Nickerson credits Alcott with creating one of the earliest works of detective fiction in American literature— preceded only by Edgar Allan Poe's The Murder in the Rue Morgue, and his other Auguste Dupin stories with the 1865 thriller V.V. or Plots and Counterplots. Alcott published the story anonymously, and it concerns a Scottish aristocrat who tries to prove that a mysterious woman has killed his fiancé and cousin. The detective on the case, Antoine Dupre, is a parody of Poe's Dupin, who is less concerned with solving the crime than in setting up a way to reveal the solution with a dramatic flourish. Alcott became even more successful with the first part of Little Women, or Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, 1868, a semi-autobiographical account of her childhood with her sisters in Concord, Massachusetts, 
which the Roberts brothers published. When Alcott returned to Boston following her travels in Europe, she became an editor at a magazine, Mary's Museum. There, she met Thomas Niles, who encouraged the writing of part one of the novel by asking her to create a book especially for girls. Part two, or part second, also known as Good Wives, 1869, followed the March sisters into adulthood and marriage. Little Men, 1871, detailed Joe's life at the Plumfield School she founded with her husband, Professor Bayer, after part two of Little Women. Lastly, Joe's Boys, 1886, completed the March family saga. In Little Women, Alcott based her heroine, Joe, on herself. However, Joe marries at the end of the story, whereas Alcott remains single throughout her life. She explained her spinsterhood in an interview with Louise Chandler Moulton. I am more than half persuaded that I am a man's soul put by some freak of nature into a woman's body because I have fallen in love with so many pretty girls and never once the least bit with any man. However, Alcott's romance while in Europe with a young Polish man, Ladislas Laddy Wisnowski, was detailed in her journals, but then deleted by Alcott herself before her death. Alcott identified Laddie as the model for Laurie in Little Women. Likewise, each of her characters seems to have parallels with people from Alcott's life, from Beth's death mirroring Lizzie's to Joe's rivalry with the youngest, Amy, as Alcott felt a rivalry for Abigail May at times. Though Alcott never married, she did take in May's daughter Louisa after May's untimely death in 1879, caring for Lulu for the next eight years. In addition to drawing on her own life during the development of Little Women, Alcott also took influence from several of her earlier works, including The Sisters' Trial, A Modern Cinderella, and In the Garret. The characters within these short stories and poems, in addition to Alcott's own family and personal relationships, inspired the general concepts and bases for many of the characters within Little Women and the author's subsequent novels. Little Women was well-received, with critics and audiences finding it to be a fresh, natural representation of daily life, suitable for many age groups. An eclectic magazine reviewer called it the very best of books to reach the hearts of the young of any age from 6 to 60. With the success of Little Women, Alcott shied away from the attention and would sometimes act as a servant when fans would come to her house. Along with Elizabeth Stoddard, Rebecca Harding Davis, and Moncure Crane and others, Alcott was a part of a group of female authors during the Gilded Age who addressed women's issues in a modern and candid manner. Their works were, as one newspaper columnist of the period commented, among the decided signs of the times. Thank you for joining Bite at a Time Books behind the story today, while we answered some of the questions you have about one of your favorite classic authors. Again, my name is Brie Carlisle, and I hope you come back next time when we answer more questions about one of your favorite classic authors. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter at biteatatimebooks.com. Check out the show notes or our website, biteatatimebooks.com, for the links for our show.